Okay, so now we're gonna get to the wall and ceiling panel installation. Um, first step we should do is actually get our outlets installed in these lower wall panels before we start installing them. There's two different types of outlets that are gonna come in the kit. They're gonna be in the electrical kit with, uh, with the wiring harness. Um, so there's the regular 12 volt, you know, cigarette lighter uh, socket style, and then there's a, a USB 2.0. Um, the back sides of these, there's these little retaining rings. Those are going to come off to do the installation, but um, I wanted to show you a little trick that makes things easier for you when you're installed. Okay, this is the back of the 12 volt outlet. The negative post you can see is right on the kind of outer edge of the perimeter of the, of the outlet. This one, the negative post is closer in towards the middle. Um, but to help yourself further down the road when you're, when you're installing the wiring on these, um, if you turn these outlets so that the negative post is downward, all right, and then make sure that this cover, the hinge right here, is on the opposite side, so it hinges upward. So negative post on the bottom, on the front side, hinge at the top for both of these. When you install them and lock them down so they stay in that orientation, it makes it really easy when you're looking at the back side of the panel uh, for installing your uh, pigtails, your splitters for the outlets. So again, negative post at the bottom on the front side of the outlet facing in, inside the van, which you'll see it hinges at the top and it just, uh, just makes it easier. Okay, so we're taking the retaining ring off the back. This is the 12 volt socket. You're gonna have, um, Every, everywhere that there's an outlet, it's a pair of them and they're stacked, all right? And it doesn't matter which one's on top or which one's on the bottom, you can you can sort of pick and choose. And you can even decide to do two USBs here and then two 12 volts up front. It really, really doesn't matter, they use the same hole cut out. Um, but you'll have five USBs and five uh, 12 volts. So anyway, so I, I oriented it so that the hinge is on the opposite side of the negative post, sticking this through the front of the hole here, keeping that hinge facing towards the top, because in this particular panel, this edge is at the top. We're gonna turn it 90 degrees to put it into the wall. And then I'm coming back through here and I'm putting my retaining ring on. Okay, so we're gonna start with our first panel here. We're working on the driver's side, uh, just behind the driver's seat. We're gonna start with the low panel. Um, and basically throughout the build, we're, we're gonna start low and work our way up. So we're working with panels and we're working with L-Track at the same time. So start low, work your way up. Um, we're gonna do low panel and then a piece of horizontal track, mid panel and then a piece of horizontal track, and then an up, upper panel and then a piece of horizontal track to kind of cover up the wall. Basically the vertical tracks are the, gonna be the last step of the process. Those are the last ones to go in. Um, so. It, when you're working with your track, remember that we've got our Loctite here to lubricate the bolt and we're working with our um, countersunk M6 by 25 millimeter screws. And so it'll say M6 by um, M6 by 1 by 25 millimeter. Um, so they're a little bit shorter than the ones we were using for the track and the ceiling. Okay, so first things first, we're going to connect our, um, our outlets here. I'm just going to actually tighten this up one more time while I'm in here. All right, and so positive we know is gonna be the top post here. So we took one of our red positive leads and we're slipping it on. All right, nice and tight. Take the positive down to the next outlet and we know it's on top. Slip that on there, go to our negatives. Slip that on, negative. Slip that on. Going to do the same thing for these front outlets here. One more step to this particular panel, and this is going to happen at a few other places in the kit. We've got some thermoform trim pieces to cover up some of the weird bump outs and, and areas in the van that a flat panel just won't, won't take care of. So we're looking at this particular structure right here. All right, so we're looking at this particular little bump out here on the low wall that's going to be kind of living kind of behind this wall panel. And we've got this particular trim piece to accommodate that. All right, so it's gonna kind of fit over the top and slide down and behind that D-ring here. And then this flange is actually gonna be captured by the wall panel itself. So we're gonna move our wall panel into place here. And just as you're doing this, just kind of make sure your wiring is tucking back into the recess of the wall and not getting pinched anywhere. Okay, one thing to keep in mind here, get this out of the way. 
these Ford vans, they, they use this adhesive kind of to create these seams down here and it can be kind of gobbed up in some, some areas. Um, it just might be something that kind of gets in the way of the fitment and, and you know, sometimes you might actually have to, to take out your X-Acto knife or a Dremel or something like that and sort of peel back some of the fabric from the edge of the, of the panel and create a little relief cut to work around that, that glue. Um, we're going to try to get this to fit without having to do that first though. Okay, now is another good reminder, if you haven't already done this, remember to take out some of those set screws that you were using to set the A-frame because this is where a piece of L-Track is going to lie, so we don't want that there. So take out your set screw and remember to throw a little bit of the um, rust preventative in there as well. Okay, so we've got our panel in place. I kind of checked fitment. Um, it doesn't seem like the glue at the bottom of the, of the wall is gonna affect this particular panel, so we're good to go. Um, so we're working on A-frame, just below A-frame number TH6, and we're gonna put this corresponding piece of track in there. So I grabbed my track, I looked at the etching at the back end, it says TH uh, 148 for transit high 148, and then TH6, all right? So that's the corresponding piece of L-track. Um, for these double flange, flange pieces of L-Track, some of them are symmetrical from one end to the next. This one's a little bit different. So if you put it up there and align it, and it seems like the holes aren't lined up properly, you probably just need to flip it from end to end. All right, so this is the piece of track that's gonna go up there. I'm gonna get a screw ready to go with um, the, uh, the thread locker. And really to put this panel in place, we just need to, to put a couple screws in to start. And hand tools here. You don't want to use a power tool and zip it in really quick because you can sometimes um, seize the bolts in there. Okay, so we just have a couple screws retaining this track right now. So the track is in loosely to start out with. Um, and we're gonna kind of do a loose fit of basically everything and then come back through and tighten everything down. But you can see um, this, this panel's pivoting a little bit and we wanna get it to fit up tight to get underneath the flange of the L-Track here. Um, so we're gonna come back through and actually put some set screws at the uh, bottom edge of this panel uh, to keep it tucked nice and tight up in here since there isn't an, a piece of L-Track capturing the bottom edge of the panel like elsewhere in the uh in the build so we'll show you how to do that okay so we're going to go back through and set the screws that kind of hold the bottom edge of the panel keep it up tight up against the uh edge of the l-track up top and then kind of hold the bottom edge of the panel in um, so we're just using some of the long self-tapping screws there'll be holes holes pre-marked or pre-drilled here at the bottom of the panel where you're putting them in and we're just going to come in here um we've got uh one of the pry tools, you know, you can use a crowbar or something like that, but it's basically just wedged underneath there, kind of like drywallers do, and, and you just press on it to keep the panel up here nice and tight. On this edge, the trim piece actually holds it really tight up against the, the, uh, the bottom edge of the L-Track. We're coming through here and setting our set screw. You'll see the panel bulge out like that. And you might go back and forth a couple times because it's the screw is biting into the, to the metal. like that and don't reef on it super hard just enough to get it a nice tight fit okay so we're moving up uh, from the low wall panel to the mid wall panel here uh, this is one of those areas where you can get the, the thermoform recessed pocket here as well. This particular van is getting a flat panel. So we're working on panel number TH7, track number TH7, and A-frame number TH7. There's one more spot here though where we've got a little bump out. Um, this little, this little kind of goiter here in the van. Um, so we're going to put this cap over it. Um, the long kind of flanges of this, of this um, particular trim piece are going to be captured by the panel. The short ones are gonna be captured by track. So the short one kind of goes on the bottom here and then over to the side. Tuck it in there like that. And then the panel's gonna come in, whoops, the panel's gonna come in over it. In fact, if you have a second set of hands, um, you also might need to um, loosen up the last track bolt or something like that to get it to 
get it to seat properly. Just to allow the track to be manipulated a little bit more. And then we're gonna bring in our panel. And again, we probably went a little tight with our L-Track here, so we're gonna loosen it. There we go. And you'll feel it recess down into the uh, into the flange of the L-Track. Create a nice transition with our trim piece here. And then we're gonna bring the piece of L-Track up. Okay, and then we're gonna put our first screw in here. I set it up with some of the um, thread locker. All right, so we'll put in some more screws just loosely in this L-Track to hold that panel into place and then keep moving forward from there. Okay, so we've actually moved back to panel number TH8. So this is over the driver's side rear wheel well. Um, so we just need to get the outlets hooked up there, which Steve was working on. Um, and then you can see there's a couple little relief cuts for the uh, cargo D-ring over the wheel well, which you'll see when we're installing it. Um, this one's pretty straightforward. Just kind of slip it up over the D-ring and then tuck it up underneath the track and, and put the track in. Okay, so we're gonna move up to the driver's side rear window pocket panel. Um, I just wanted to give you guys a couple tips on identifying which one is which. It looks really similar from one side to the other. So um, to identify which one you're working with, the, the thicker kind of shoulder, the thicker flange is gonna be facing up. The thinner flange is gonna be facing down. So that's kind of on this face. And then as far as front to rear, um, the front has a really thin edge here and a deeper recess into the pocket. And the back is a little bit shallower recess um, back here in the pocket. And all else fails, if you get it up there and it doesn't seem like it's fitting properly, it, you've probably got the wrong side. So let's try this out. Make sure it's recessed into the track there. Come my way a little bit, there we go. And we're nice and flush up against the L-Track edge here. Bring in our L-Track. And we're golden. Okay, so we're gonna move to the passenger side here. We're gonna start low with TH10 and then move up to TH11. Same procedure as the, um, as the driver's side. We're just gonna connect the electrical, place this panel, L-Track, then the window pocket, and then the top L-Track. Uh, another little pro tip here, when you're connecting these, these flag terminals, these 90 degree terminals, it's easy to kind of slip the, the terminal on not quite securely. So just make sure the little blade that's coming off the back of the, um, uh, of the outlet is truly going in, into the kind of recessed like M-shaped M you know, female portion of, of the terminal and not slipping to one side and just tucking behind the plastic of it. So just make sure it's on there securely uh, is, is the point of that. Okay, so now that we've got all of the flat wall panels from the kind of bottom working up uh, in the van, we're gonna move on to ceiling panels and then thermoform trim pieces, which is kind of the last step. So before I do that, I wanna, I wanna prep by um, loosening up the bolts and all of the ceiling L-Track we want to allow that ceiling L-Track to hang down by those bolts and give us some space to uh, shift panels up and back and forth and get the proper fitment. Okay, so now we're at the point where we should probably just test some electrical before we button everything up. We don't want to get too much further, but we're at the point where we've, we've kind of crimped on wiring connections and stuff like that. There's no open wires anywhere. The fan is hooked up and we can we can test what we're, what we're looking at. Um, so fuses are in. Uh, in their appropriate spots, and we basically just need to flip the breaker to make sure everything's working. Okay, here we are at the breaker. I'm gonna flip this yellow switch in. We should hear the fan beep. And I heard the fan beep, the lights turned on, and we'll just go and check the lights on the USB outlets. Okay, another thing before we wrap up, um, I wanted to sort of manipulate this positive cable a little bit more. Um, so I'll show you what we did. Um, we kind of put some hush mat up here to hold it tight because it basically wants to follow along here. And the best place for it is to tuck into this corner here 
all the way down before it turns and comes into our to our breaker. And there's going to be the L track here, and then that that similar trim piece that covers it up here. So it's okay that it's a little loose right now. Um, and whatever method you guys find to, to keep it tucked in there is, is totally fine. Um, just know that that is kind of the easiest routing to work with. Okay, so uh, we went back a little bit. We're gonna actually start with this um, with this middle kind of full headliner. It basically spans the whole width of the van, tucks in behind your driver's headliner here. And so in order to get this to fit, what we did was we're, we're taking down these first few bolts here of these parallel L tracks. And this is actually gonna allow us to slip slip the back edge of this up in here a little bit to work with it before slipping it back forward. So it's kind of like this, you know, this lower edge where my thumb is wiggling is what's gonna transition into the driver's headliner. Starting here and I'm moving it back behind these L tracks and then forward and tuck it underneath the edge of the headliner here. And oops, I missed one. Go back like that and then put those up into place so that this aligns and shift it back and forth until you can get these L tracks to seat back where they should aligned with your with your mounting holes okay one thing to keep in mind is if any of these wire drops are are coming down the sidewall here preventing the edge of this from butting right up against the wall you want to get them get and get them back and tucked up above this and then I'm going to go in and, and kind of loosely fit some l track screws you might need to kind of stick your tool up through the mounting hole and pry it over to get a get the next screw started in line um, you can also sometimes just put enough pressure on it with your hand which i think is what i'm going to do Okay, didn't drive that one all the way in. That's lined up already. Okay, we removed our upper horizontal track. Try to, to, to get this piece in first and then we'll go back through and replace that. So basically this particular piece is fitting up over the, the uh, fuse box. We're gonna start with this upper corner, tuck it underneath both this trim piece and the factory headliner. And you might need to push it out of the up and out of the way a little bit first and get that up underneath um, the bottom of the driver's headliner. So it can take a little bit of manipulation here um, to get all these corners to fit in the way they should. You might decide to loosen your track, slide this back a little bit first so that this edge ends up really easily kind of being the last one where this panel comes over and tucks over this flange and which will more easily allow you to get all these things to tuck up you know behind the factory headliner and transition behind this piece because this piece is technically behind this piece once the little corners are caught up in there you'll see it when you have eyes on it when you have your hands on it um, and it just kind of sometimes takes some manipulation to get it to fit properly Okay, we're gonna come back through with the piece that fits up over the uh, slider door here. All right. And same idea, It's we're going in the opposite um, sequence that we did for the driver's, si uh, the driver's side. So we're just trying to get it up into there, there, and then tuck that corner back up into there feed it up behind. All right, so basically there's a shelf up top here that's gonna recess the, uh, or let the um, ceiling panel rest on top of that. L-Track is gonna capture this, and then there's another trim piece that kind of integrates here. This corner right here with the weather stripping, it kind of is a little bit different from van to van how it wants to play with this trim piece, and it kind of depends on how far you have it shoved up into the ceiling and all that stuff. So you might just you know play with it a little bit um, this one actually turned out pretty good. You'll see it kind of stand off a little bit. There's just, there's extra material behind there now, which, is, which isn't which is what it was designed with, um, but it's gonna still serve its purpose for, for sealing the door jam. Okay, we're gonna keep going with the, kind of the finishing touch of this pillar behind the sliding door here. 
Um, it's a piece much like the ones that we had um, on either side of the back doors. There's another cargo D-ring at the bottom here. So we're gonna bring it in here, slip it behind there, get it roughly into place. But might need to kind of push up on the upper trim piece a little bit to get it to transition and then kind of push at the top here as well to get it to recess back into there nicely. But kind of the same idea, keeping one hand on it to keep it against the wall while you peel back the weather stripping and work it down the edge here. Okay, we're gonna try to sort of finish off this side here um, with another small trim piece that goes uh, and transitions with the passenger side B-pillar here. Tucks in behind the, the weather stripping and then uh, creates a transition with that other big trim piece there. Um, so this one, you gotta tuck over um, the cargo ring here and then it also needs to tuck up underneath that first trim piece, but that's pretty easy to do just pull outward in the middle and kind of push forward at the top a little bit to get it to tuck up underneath that piece, and get it to kind of slide in there. Yeah, a little panel tool sometimes can just help persuade it. And then it's gonna end up tucking back here. Now for extra extra um, sort of securement, I guess, um, we're gonna give you some dual lock squares. And you'll need to, the difference with how we use them on this application is that you're gonna to need to stick one half of the dual lock square to the trim and then the other half to the van before you do the install. You don't want to go in there with you know the, the adhesive open on one end because the adhesive will grab before you want it to and it's not gonna be in the right place. So you do have to kind of estimate a little bit where it's gonna go. Stick one piece on the inside of the trim piece and the other piece on the, on the inside of the um, B pillar there um, where, the, where you know they're gonna mate up up top right around in this area and then another one maybe right down here just inside or I should say just to the um, just outboard of this D-ring just right about here so kind of where the the actual painted body of the van is and nice and flat and then uh, you know just across from it on the inside of the, the trim piece and that's just one extra little bit of uh, bit of securement for this piece. Okay, the other thing about this trim piece, you know, kind of talking about the dual lock and how you could use it. Um, you know, if you notice up top here, um, if this is pushed all the way up in to transition behind this piece here, and it's tucked all the way up against the wall, a connection point down here is really all you need. It's keeping it secure up there because it's not coming out from there. Okay, um, we're gonna button up this corner uh, with the last little bit of trim basically a mirror image of what's on the passenger's side. A little bit different fitment though because there is a piece of L-Track that's holding in one edge of it. So we're gonna come down here. All right, so a little notch for the cargo D-ring. Here's our four gauge cable we were just messing around with. It's gonna fit kind of over that. Um, if you need to tuck this cable in this corner and put a little bit of painter's tape over there or something, that's, that's fine just to hold it in place while you're kind of putting this trim piece in. Um, I kind of, have it and it's mostly staying where I want it to so but we're gonna tuck the bottom edge in and you got to kind of bend in the middle and then tuck it up underneath the um, the upper piece of trim sort of double check back there make sure that the cable is staying where it should and then it's gonna tuck back into this corner the cable is not staying where it should you can also grab this cable and this rounded kind of curl you can sort of tuck it in there a little bit to allow it to move around with this trim piece, which sometimes helps keep, keep it from getting where you don't want it. All right, and then we brought our vertical track in here. This forward edge of the vertical track is, is kind of um, capturing that flange edge of this trim piece here. And we're just gonna tighten everything down from the middle. So there's a bit of a bow. Um, so you just wanna, if you have somebody helping you here, you know, press in the middle. These vertical pieces of track, um, there's, there's a curvature to the van wall. And so because the tracks are straight, you wanna start in the middle and you wanna just be careful and kind of work outward from the middle, down and then, and then upward. Um, and it actually helps if you put a little pressure on the middle of the track, press it all the way up against the wall and then set your first uh, screw all the way in to kind of hold that curvature before going through. 
Definitely use your, your, um, your Loctite to lubricate the threads as it goes in. And, um, you know, just be, just be careful. If it feels like it's starting to cross thread or get really kind of hung up, don't try to force it. It's best to pull it back out, maybe realign some things and, and try again. Okay, we're back over to the driver's side. Now we're gonna do the upper wall panel on this side. I think you're resting on the A-frame ever so slightly back there. There we go. There we go. Go for it. And there's a floating U-nut back there. That's kind of one of the only places where we're going to have a, an M6 bolt that goes through the panel to capture that top corner. There's going to be another trim piece right at the back of this that we'll get to later. And then we're going to pick up track labeled TH14 and it's going to capture the top edge of this panel like that. All right, back over to the passenger side here. We're going to um, fill in this uh, ceiling panel here, THC 15. Um, sort of the same idea uh, with a few less moving parts. Tuck it up behind the L-Track, then slide it back out to interact with the flange of this. And then it's going to all get tightened down after we get the center ceiling panel in. So we're just gonna leave that there with this edge kind of resting on the flange of the L-Track for now. All right, so we're gonna get started on the rear uh, rear trim. So this is basically the trim that goes around the rear transom or the you know door jam for the rear cargo doors. So we're gonna start, it's a three piece trim um, and there's a piece that comes up over the top and then two kind of stanchions that meet up with it on the sides. All right, so we needed to come back and, and reshoot a little bit of this rear trim here. You can see this piece is already installed. I just wanted to take you through, um, you know, the first piece that gets installed here. Um, when you start, your ceiling panels will not be in place. Um, so you're just gonna be putting this rear trim piece in, in, into, into place here. Um, this hole cut out here, you're gonna put it up, move it around these, these, um, these door latches here. And then it should just basically pop up into place um, over the rear transom. And then the, the real critical thing is just getting the weather stripping right. So you can see there's kind of a big flap to this weather stripping here. Um, and as you're feeding, as you're placing the rear trim, you're kind of feeding the edge of the trim into this flap of, uh, of the weather stripping around the back. And so as you put it up into place, you're kind of, you know, going along with your hands like this and just feeding it over the lip of, uh, of the trim piece. So this is gonna be the first one. And then the rear pieces will, will fit in here and fit into these indexes here. And then you'll, you'll sort of wrap the weather stripping around the edge of those as well. Okay, so we're over on the driver's side um, rear door upright trim piece. A couple things I wanted to point out on this side. Um, there, we, we make a little cutout here and, and as standard we patch it. Um, you may remember me mentioning that there's a cargo light switch from Ford that goes back into this recess here. We unhooked that and, and got rid of it for now, but you could wire that light back or you could wire the switch back in and if you plan on reutilizing some of the factory um, cargo lights. And so if you do that, you'll have a place to put this switch. You just need to maybe cut away a square of fabric and kind of push this little patch out and then reinstall the switch here before you put this trim in. All right, and to get this piece on, it's sort of the same technique. You need to get it tucked behind this lip of the, of the weather stripping. Um, and so you'll need to get the bottom corner of the trim piece over the cargo d-ring there's a little notch in it right there and then working from the top kind of push down on it to make sure it sort of recesses and fits tightly in with with the sort of uh notch you know in the top trim piece here and so sometimes you have to give it give it a fair amount of force to to push it down into place and get it to sit flush and then now on this 
kind of pound it into place and then you're just kind of grabbing that one flap of the of the weather stripping and just working it down as you go along now make sure that as you're doing that you're not pushing the whole piece of weather stripping fully back out so you kind of need to you know do two things at once now back to the first trim piece the one over the top you could you could employ this method up there too it's just a little it's a little more tricky to kind of get it started since it's kind of more three-dimensional piece but just kind of work it down and work it behind the flap of the weather stripping just making sure that the weather stripping itself is staying seated on the van okay we're at the back of the van here we're going to finish up these two back corners so we've got these little wire chase kind of trim pieces that cover up this factory wiring so we didn't need to completely reroute that um, so this kind of covers up that channel and what it, what it's doing is this little notch here so you know which one's the driver the driver's side and which one's the passenger this one is the passenger side so so you can see what the piece looks like the longer notch is going to actually ride it right up on the back side of this top corner l track and you're going to push it up in there and we actually loosened this l track here so just above the mid wall pocket to tuck that into there and then this flange is going to get tucked behind the wall panel so we slid the wall panel forward and we're sliding it back over that transition we can actually keep we can go back this way a little bit here like that and then the l-track is going to come in and capture the back edge of this and cover up that whole area i want to press on the track here in the middle until it's it's you know pushed up against the the van and then slowly kind of thread this one in um, until it's fully seated and the track is taking the same curvature as the van and then I came back up top here to I came back up top to um, capture this top bolt right here and then I can kind of just work my way back and forth again starting from the middle up and down um, going a little bit at a time to just kind of slowly let the um, the bolts kind of work their way in and, and let this track kind of uh, continue to take the curvature of the van. And then we're gonna repeat the same exact process on uh, back on the driver's side. Okay. So uh, back inside the van, we're gonna move forward with uh, the rear parts of the ceiling panels here. So we're on the passenger side, uh, THC, transit high ceiling 14. All right, and now this one is gonna tuck up underneath the ceiling track here. So that's why we brought the ceiling track down. There's a big gap for the panel to really get all the way back behind the ceiling track up there, which gives us room to bring it this way. And then once it clears the top edge of this track, we slide it back forward behind that flange. Make sure it's clearing the back of the ceiling track, which it is. You can always test fit it by just kind of taking your hands and making sure the ceiling track recesses all the way up the way it would when it's, when it's tightened down with the screws. And that one's pretty much done. We're gonna come back through and tighten screws later on because we have more ceiling panels to put in. All right, we're back over on the driver's side. Uh, working on THC 13, all right, and it's basically again. It's the same idea as what we did with that last panel um, So we're just gonna go for it Slide forward a little bit so I can get that wiring out of the way Okay, okay so we're moving towards the um, The center ceiling panel in the back here now this one has some electrical connections that we need to make it's also where our fan cutout is uh, we just need to get some wiring out of the way for the fan which you can just kind of tuck some of the some of the bit of the wiring up against the um, up over top of the speed strut if you need to do that if you're working by yourself and you have the fan hole you can just kind of put it around your head while you're working with two hands and to connect stuff here um, so we're gonna make our connection here and what we did here is you actually remove these center um, ceiling L tracks entirely for these um, for these center supports or sorry for the um, center ceiling panels uh, because we'll need to kind of place it forward and then slide it back into place and we'll kind of need to do the same thing for that forward ceiling panel as well so just take those out that'll be kind of one of the last things that we put back into place 
So we're gonna tuck the wiring up and out of the way over here, slide the panel up all the way over the back of the L-Track until it hits the actual bolts holding it up, which gives us enough room over here. And then we slide it back into place here and it's perfectly centered over the fan. Tuck it back in here. We'll come back through later and there's some center support brackets here that we find the little floating U-nuts. Um, but we are good. Um, we are down to our last uh, ceiling panel, our last panel actually. Um, so. Uh, this one, kind of just like the, the aft one, we're going to slide in um, above the track until it basically hits the bolts of the track on this side, shift it over, and then pop it back in underneath the flange on this side. So you can come back this way. Not that much. Okay. Does that feel good? That feels good. All right, and then there's a couple of center ceiling support bolts uh, where those floating U-nuts are. So before we tighten everything down so we have time to kind of shift stuff back and forth, we want to locate those. Easy way to do it is to kind of feel around up there with the T-handle. Uh, sometimes you got to take a flashlight and kind of look through the hole to see if you can see the, uh, the U-nut. And then there's a good bit of camber to this ceiling so to get the first one started especially more up got it okay okay last stop to the uh, or last step to the ceiling is our ceiling cross tracks all right so this is just going to capture the front and back of of this uh big center ceiling panel they go right up here where they were before Okay, uh, last couple pieces of track here are forward verticals. So it's the same procedure as we did with the rear. Um, and you just wanna start in the middle, press on it, get one of these middle ones fully seated to allow the track to take the curvature of the van, and then kind of work your way outward from there, up and down um, to, uh, to secure it down. Okay, we're gonna put our fuse box cover on and it just fits up into this little void and we're going to take four of our small self-tapping screws and you want to tuck it pretty close into the corner don't go so close that the screw drifts and you know sort of leaves there but you can see what how much of a flange you have left to bite into so just kind of up here in the corner and then we'll do all four corners Okay, uh, very last step here is, is putting the finishing white trim ring that comes with your fan in um, on the inside here. Um, it's best to actually orient these, um, these screw holes um, front to back so that they're at the back edge and the front edge instead of the sides. It helps to um, uh, favor the, the fan ring to kind of match the pitch of the van. So we're just gonna flip it up. Okay, so we are finished with the installation of the Ford Transit modular interior conversion package from Adventure Wagon. Uh, so from this point on, uh, you've got a really great modular base to add beds, bags, cabinetry, um, and anything using the L-Track system. Um, you know, there's definitely some refinements we're, we're gonna continue to make. Um, and so if you get through this installation, uh, if you're going through it and you have any questions, uh, feel free to give us a call. You know how to reach us at info at adventurewagon.com.